Lord, we shout hallelujah for this opportunity to declare your counsel, to talk about the good news. Father Lord, we commit today's service into your hands. We ask for your assistance. We ask for your divine help. Holy Spirit, open our hearts of understanding. And as we, as we pray, oh Lord, let our heavens be open in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Again, welcome to the month of September to remember uh, for us, uh, September is the month of deliverance and restoration. Deliverance and restoration. Hallelujah. Jesus taught uh, about deliverance extensively in the gospel. And many times we don't seem to realize it. That his ministry was mainly a ministry of deliverance, uh, a compassionate ministry, a healing ministry, and a ministry of the world. Today we'll be looking into that area of Jesus' ministry, which has to deal with deliverance. And uh, deliverance does not necessarily mean that somebody is in bondage. But many times, God's people go into bondage, God's people go into captivity, either due to ignorance, carelessness, or maybe willful sin. They go into uh, enemy's uh, camp. But God, in his mercy, has provision for his people. In Obadiah 117, Obadiah 117, the Bible say, upon Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the house of God, is a place of prayer. Upon Mount Zion, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Amen. So deliverance takes place in God's house. It takes place in a, in a place of, Zion is a place of prayer. Zion is a place of worship. Zion is, is a place you know, of altar. It's a place of uh, intercession. Amen? So, upon Mount Zion, there's a physical Zion, but Zion, as we know in the word of God, is the house of God. So, in God's house, in God's presence, you know, there shall be deliverance. And by deliverance, many people are delivered out of captivity, out of enemies' trap, out of satanic hold, out of stagnation, backwardness, limitation, out of spell, out of uh, pits of the enemy out of any bondage. Some of them are hard bondage. Some of them are self-imposed bondage. Some of the deliverances that God delivers us from are, you know, family causes, you know, generational causes, ancestral causes. Many of them are as a result of ancestral sin, you know, by, uh, you know, worshiping idols, by bowing down to other gods. So many people have gone into, but the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many of our ancestors and fathers went into bondage. They sought for power where there was no, where there is no power. And many, many cases, some of those altars and shrines and covens and sanctums, you know, gave them temporary power, temporary relief, because there's no free gift with the devil. And the Bible also said, and shall be holiness. So two things before possession. First of all, you have to be in, in the presence. Mount Zion. Number two, um, you have to be delivered. The unction in that in environment functions in the way that you are delivered. And then there is holiness. Why holiness? Because God said in the book of First, uh, First Peter chapter two verse nine speaks about we being a holy nation. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. So God sees us as nations. And he says, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out. So we have been called out, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. Amen? Many of us, even though we are religious, we found ourselves into church. But that doesn't mean that we are redeemed, we are born again. So we are called to be set aside for God. Holy, holiness means those who are called and you know, are set aside for God. Hallelujah. So upon, let's go back to that over there, 117. Upon Zion, upon Mount Zion, I told you Zion is a house of God, is a house of prayer, is a place of intercession, worship, praise, is a place of divini um, where divinity means with humanity, where we come to God and God, God visits us. When we call upon him, he answers us. So we obtain deliverance in God's house 
and then we are expected to live a holy life. Holiness is uh, one of the uh, 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 one of the things that God designed that we should live to be like Him. That we should live holy is a lifestyle, a lifestyle of living for God, a lifestyle of following the path of righteousness, a lifestyle of doing the right thing and obeying God, fearing God and honoring God with your life, with your body, with your substance. Amen. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Who is the house of Jacob? You and I, we are the house of Jacob. Amen. If you are, if you are a believer, you are a Jacob as, you know, uh, by adoption. You are Israel by adoption. Amen. So this evening we're looking at uh, a short you know, message, and then we're going to go into prayer, which I call Possess Your Possession. Possess Your Possession. I already gave you, you know, some definition of deliverance. Deliverance means to be free from oppression. What is deliverance? Deliverance means to be delivered from, you know, satanic uh, prison. You know, you are held against your will by some spell or jinx or curse or covenant or anything that holds you contrary to your, your, your will is, you know, something that has, you know, oppressed you. The Bible says oppression makes a, ma a wise man mad. So deliverance is to be free from those uh, bondages, free from hard bondage, free. Remember the people of Israel as a nation, they were under bondage until God sent Moses to deliver them. Many times God sends his servant, his son, his prophet to deliver, you know, his people. So deliverance means to, you know, to break curses, uh, break family curses, break ancestral curses, break generational curses. Deliverance means to erase the mark of the enemy upon your life, mark of rejection, mark of frustration, mark of uh, uh, retrogression, mark of uh, backwardness, ancestral hold. So anything that hinders you, like Paul said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of my Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians six seventeen. So the mark that you have is a, new, a mark of righteousness. It's a mark of the blood upon your life. But the devil has, he said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, because for I bear in my body the marks of of the Lord Jesus. But the devil himself and his agents come to put the mark of the enemy. Uh, remember, you know, the Bible also talks about the mark of the beast. So there are two kinds of mark. The mark of Jesus, those who are redeemed by the blood and the mark of the enemy. If that mark is upon you, you need deliverance because that mark will identify you anywhere you go. And the agents of darkness will say, that's her, that's him. Don't allow her to go further. And deliverance means to be delivered from evil network, satanic network, evil chain, demonic hold, ancestral chain, evil locks, witchcraft padlock, occultic padlock. Deliverance means to be free from marine altars, marine serpent, marine spirits. Deliverance means to be free from nightmares, daymares, if there's anything like that, amen? So deliverance means, you know, for God to free you from anything that is not of God that the devil has used to hold you uh, bound. Deliverance means also to be to be free from, you know, ancestral and foundational strong man. Foundational strong man. Amen. And of course, we know what uh, holiness means. I already said that. Then, based on those three situations, upon Man Zion, there's worship, there's praise, and activates, you know, deliverance. And then after deliverance, you are expected to live a life of righteousness, a life of Christ, living, being Christ-like, living holy, living, you know, um, knowing fully well that you're no longer yourself, you have been bought with a price. So it's very important that we live holy and set ourselves aside for God. And that's, and after that, based on that condition, the devil will no longer find anything in you. You can possess your possession. You can possess your children. You can possess your marriage. You can possess your house. You can possess your land. You can possess your, 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 your destiny. You can possess your ministry. So whenever the devil finds something in you, he will use that against you to accuse you. And that's why the Bible called him the accuser of the brethren. So we're going to look at some conditions that causes release for you to possess your possession. Some conditions that will facilitate you to possess your possession. Number one, 
uh, uh, condition is, you know, humility in prayer. Humility in the place of prayer. Amen? Let's look at the book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Humility in the place of prayer. Then said he unto me, fear not, angel speaking to Daniel. He said, fear not, Daniel, for, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I came and I, and I am come for thy words. So the angel said, from the very first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand, and to chasten thyself. Another fashion to say, humble thyself. Amen. So the Bible always says, humble thyself before the Lord and he will exalt you. So Daniel came to pray to God, but he humbled himself in the place of prayer. Let's also look at uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, God's people, amen, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves. So the first thing there is humility. Okay, because you cannot approach God in a place of pride. You cannot approach God like argue with God. It was your fault or was it my fault. You cannot approach God with, you know, uh, a sense of entitlement. You cannot approach God with a sense of I'm a Christian. God, you should know, Amen. You should approach God with all sense of humility, Amen. Shall I say, if my people which are called by my name, the first thing there is what, humility. Humble themselves and then pray. So you can possess your possession in the place of prayer through humility. The Lord, she wept so in the book of First Samuel. The Bible told us about her encounter with God. She cried unto God, humbled herself, made a vow. And she was able to possess her possession. She was able to possess it. She was barren. She was barren. Amen. But through her prayer and humility and, and, and the vow she made, she was able to possess her position, possess Samuel. So it's very important that we, that if you want to possess, there are some things that belong to you. Okay? But in many cases, the devil wants to steal what God has released. Remember Daniel? God has already released a help. He sent an angel. The angel told him, the very first time you prayed, we had you. But a prince of Pasha withstood, we what? withstood him. But then, because he continued pray, pray in, in the place of prayer, there was a reinforcement. That's why he cannot give up. You may not have seen, you know, anytime you pray and pray and fast and pray, and you don't see results, it's as same as if, okay, well, I've done my best. What can I do now? Nothing more. They, they say I should pray. I've prayed. I've fasted. I've given my tithe. I have worshipped God, but I have not seen results. At that point in time, when you're about to give up, is usually at the point of the miraculous. Amen. And that's why Dan Daniel prayed. First prayer he prayed, prayer point, he was hard. Amen. And he sustained, he continued. That's what we call push. Pray until something happened. Keep on praying. Amen. Don't complain. Just keep on thanking God. If you are tired of praying, go take your prayer into, into what? Thanksgiving. If you are tired of thanking God, go into worship. If you are, you know, if you are tired of you know, uh, worship, go into dancing. By the time you know it, the devil will say, ah, this person, please, God, please release his, whatever he has, release it because he's driving me nuts. He is dancing in the midst of pain. He is rejoicing in the midst of lack. Amen? So you are provoking God to release your blessing when you humble yourself in the place of prayer. Number two, revelation. Revelation of the world. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. This is very important because this shows that there are some things that belong to us, but they have to be revealed. Very important. Don't joke with revelation, especially after prayer. Don't joke with something that you know that is divine. You know it's a visitation. And you have an encounter with heaven. You have an encounter with an angel. You have a gift. Somebody gave you a gift in the dream. Somebody blessed you with a package. Somebody gave you a revelation. Secret, it is God's prerogative. Remember, God lives in secret. He that dwelleth in the secret place. So God is, you know, shielded. Even though he's light, but he is, you have, for you to approach him, you have to acquire, you know, the, 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 your, your prayer uh, relationship with him, your personal relationship with him in the secret place. Okay, it's not dark, but it's a secret place. For the fact that it's a secret place doesn't mean it's dark. Okay, so the secret things 
belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed, listen to that again, but those things which are revealed, does what? Belong unto us and our children. So it is the revealed things that belong to us. Okay? So when something is revealed in a place of prayer or revealed in a dream, remember Joseph. How many of you remember Joseph? Joseph was sleeping on his own. God visited him and gave him a dream. Or was a dream that, you know, that he's going to be, uh, uh, he's, he's going to stand out. His sheaf will stand out and all of other sheaves are going to make obeisance to him, including the moon representing the, uh, the, the, the 10 stars, okay? Representing the, the, the 11 stars, representing the brothers. And, uh, uh, the moon represented the mother and the sun represented the father. He said the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to his own star. So God was already revealing to him what belongs to him. And they tried to kill him because his, father, his brothers were the ones that wanted to kill him. The Bible says a man's enemy are members of his household. A man's enemy. So, you see, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. So those are generational blessings that God has already has given, but they have to be revealed that we may do the works of this law. And you could see that as soon as the, the, that Joseph you know, you know, went to become the prime minister, he was able to sustain his brothers. He was able to sustain his family. He was able to sustain two nations, Israel and Egypt, because something was revealed to him, amen, about his future. May God reveal to you about your destiny, about your future, so that you can possess your possession. Because when God reveals to you your area, maybe he reveals to you you are going to be a prophet, reveals to you that this is the area I'm calling you. Many people are so blessed to know that what to know their, their area of uh, ministry or their area of business or career because it was revealed to them. Hallelujah. Very important. Amen. Now, um, let's look at also Daniel chapter 2 verse 22. Daniel chapter 2 verse 22. He revealed it. Who revealed it? Jesus. I mean God. He revealed deep and secret things. So God can reveal things that are deep. The Bible says deep, call it deep. He knows things hidden. You will not see it with your physical eyes. But when you talk to God and pray and God shows you mercy, he can reveal them to you. He knows what is the darkness. It's hidden. Some blessings are hidden. Talents are hidden. Do you know that the, the aluminum, uranium, where are they? They are, under, they are hidden. Hallelujah. You can even live in a place of plenty. You will know that there are treasures all around you. They are hidden. So he said he revealed the deep and secret things. He knew it what is in the darkness and the light do that with him. And this was Daniel when he went to pray and God revealed to him the secret of the dream, the dream and the meaning. And Daniel was able to possess his life and the life of other astrologers. Amen. So condition number three for you to possess your position is prayer. This prayer is different now. Prayer by taking it, prayer by force, taking it by force. Prayer by taking it by what? Force. That means it's not just prayer, but an aggressive prayer. It's not just an aggressive prayer, but a desperate prayer. I will not let you go unless you bless me. That was Jacob. Jacob had an encounter with an angel. He said, ah, I've seen you. You're not going anywhere. One prayer point, I will not let you go unless you, I need my possession. You have to bless me. It doesn't matter what you say. Angel was begging, release me, let me go. The day is about to break. He said, for where? I'm holding you. Now that I'm, I don't know when else I'm going to see you. It could, be a, it could be a lifetime opportunity. He held strong. He held firm until what happened? The angel now asked him, hey, by the way, what's your name? He said, his name is Jacob. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be blessed by Jacob. Your name is Israel. So, his real identity was revealed and he was able to what? Possess his possession. Hallelujah. I pray that God will reveal your true identity.
passed through Jericho. The Bible never recorded that Jesus went back to Jericho. So if blind blind Bartimaeus, son of Timos, did not cry and cry and pray, guess what? He would have remained blind till he died. Amen. But he saw that opportunity. He began to cry. It wasn't just prayer. He began to shout the beggar need. But the man needs his eyes. He needs his, he needs to possess his eyes. The devil took his eyes from him. Amen. And as he kept on crying, Jesus to say, say, call him. And the people who were trying to look down on him say, oh yeah, he's calling you. And he ran threats. And Jesus asked him, what do you want? He said, my, I need to see. You know, the devil took my eyes. I need to repossess my eyes. And he says, your faith has made you whole. And he regained his eyes. He was able to possess his possession. Because can you, how the beauty of life without eyes you know, you are so rich, you are so wealthy, you don't even know the clothes you are wearing, you don't know the food you are eating, you don't know where you are going. You know, you are in dark. That's one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. Amen. A paralyzed man at least can see people. He can see the, the, the trees, the, 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 the wind, the, you know, he can see all the things that God created. He can see the flowers, he can see animals, he can see human beings. But someone who is blind cannot see nothing. He's in darkness. Amen. But he knew something. He knew that Jesus was the son of David. Hallelujah. And he began to pray. He began to cry. A aggressive prayer. A prayer of desperation. A prayer of, ah, I cannot be shut down. They tried to shut him down. He said, he increased the prayer. He increased the volume of the prayer. Many of us, when people try to sh shut us down, you are, you are in, a, in a place or out of desperation, you are praying, and people are looking at you, ah, who is praying like this? Increase the volume. Let the volume go higher. Amen. Because that higher volume will attract divine attention. And that was what happened to blind Bartimaeus and Jesus to still. Somebody that knows me well is calling me. Somebody that knows me by my ancestral name, son of David. How did he know? A blind man, so intelligent, intelligent that understood the mystery of the mercy seats. David wrote a lot about God's mercy. There's something about God, about his mercy. He, David understood that God's mercy has no expiring date. David understood that God is a God of second chance. And God is a God of many chances. And he always cried for mercy. The Bible says, those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Blind Bartimaeus was blind, but he was knowledgeable. He had revelation about Jesus. He knew his foundation. He knew his roots. And he began to cry, Jesus, thou son of David. So he knew him well. Have mercy on me. And that was why he stood still. And now he, he, he told him that his faith, amen, has made him whole. He regained his sight. He possessed his eyes. Who knows? Paraventure, an ancestral altar, an evil foundation has taken his eyes. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that your desperation and your aggression in prayer will bring your, your word, the thief has stolen from you. Your God will cause you. From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. From the days of John the Baptist, God's kingdom suffers violence. There's violence from the day of John the Baptist. But, and the violent, those who are violent in prayer, violent in faith, will take by force. And that was what blind Bartimaeus did. He cried and kept on crying. He regained and possessed his eyes by force. I pray that God will give you the grace and the appetite to pray so that you can repossess what the thief has stolen from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, believe in amen. A better amen. So you can also possess your position by what you call the hand of God and favor. You can possess your position by hand of God, the hand of God and divine favor. Let's look at Mark, uh, Psalm 44 verse 3. From very interesting uh, scripture. He said, for they got not the land. You see, they did not get the land. For they, for they got not the land, you know, in possession by their own soul. So now, it means that it was not their strength. It was not their military might. It was not their chariots. It was not their soldiers. It was not their well-trained soldiers that got the land for them. Amen? So it is for they, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Neither did their own arm save them. Amen? But thy right hand and thy arm 
and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. So it was a hand of God. It was the right hand of God. It was an arm of God. It was the it was the light of his countenance that helped them to possess the land. There might be land that belongs to you. There might be property that belongs to you that the enemy has sat upon. But by the hand of God, by the high, right hand of God, by the right straight arm of God, I declare that you shall repossess your possession in the name of Jesus. You shall repossess what the thief has taken. Maybe they have taken your house. They have taken your car. Maybe the thief, the Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that I may give you life. I pray that Jesus will empower you with his right hand to, rep to repossess what belongs to you by his favor in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. So if they, go, go, they got that land, they got that victory by God's divine intervention, by the right hand of God, by God's favor. God favored them. And God is going to favor you. I see the hand of God coming upon you. I see God recovering your blessing, with your stolen land, your stolen house, your stolen Interesting one is Peter, very knowledgeable, very uh, if, you know uh, uh, fisherman. That you know w trained fisherman. All his life was a fisherman. The lawyers who are not making it. Not all lawyers are making it. Of course, many lawyers are wealthy. Not all engineers are making it. Of course, many engineers are wealthy. Not all doctors are making it. Not all uh, uh, scientists or, or nurses are making it. Amen. And you begin to see, you might have the same qualification with somebody, but you come out and see somebody that you might think you are better than, and that has gone so far, have companies all over the place. Amen. So, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. We are reading all the way to verse 9. Amen. And saw two sheep standing by lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and we are and we are washing their nets. Verse three. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he should thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse four. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, "Launch out into the deep." specific instruction. Amen. And let down your nets for a drought. Verse 5. What was the response? And, and Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. That's all. Amen. He tried everything. Maybe you have tried everything. But you could not possess your possession. Peter was almost going you know, home discouraged. He was going home without food. He was going home without fish. Because that was their career. They came out empty. They came out with nothing. But he said, nevertheless, at their word. Amen. Maybe you have tried everything. But nevertheless, at the word of God you are hearing today, you are going to launch into the deep. You are going to go deeper. You are going to go, you are going to press further. The Bible said they pressed him for the word. They wanted to hear the word. And the word spoke. And the word now must have spoken to the fish in the water. He said, go, fish, wherever you are, come around. Amen. They have to obey him. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, in Psalm 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is set to. Amen. For he sent his word, and he healed them, and delivered them. So he must have spoken to the fish that somebody is about to cast his net into the water. And look at verse number six. Look at the outcome of that obedience out of that divine instruction that Peter obeyed. And when they had when, and when they had this done, when they had obeyed that instruction, they enclosed a great, remember, there was no fish all of a sudden. There was a great what? Multitude of fishes. And their net was about to break. That's like about to break the bank. They had so much money that the bank was telling them, you guys have too much money. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And they had to call for help. And they beckoned unto their partner which were in the other sheep. Remember, there were two sheep. There were two sheep. That they should come and help them. When God blesses you, when you obey that divine instruction, when God reveals something to you, when you obey that divine instruction, guess what's going to happen? You are going to look for partners because you might not have the capacity to carry all the blessing. You might not have enough warehouse. You might not have enough stock room. You might need some people to assist you. And that was what happened. 
and they filled both ships so that they began to sink. Both ships were filled. But initially, this was Peter that knew about fishing that came out with nothing. Ah, there is power in spoken word. Jesus, when you obey him, divine instruction, there is going to be an outcome. There is going to be an outpouring because everything hears him. Even the fish will hear him. And may God give you that word that will set you free, that will bless you, to cause you to possess your possession, to possess your new job, to possess your covenant is an agreement. Amen. Look at the book of Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse number 14. It says, the secret of the Lord. So God has secret. That's what the Bible is telling us. Amen. Devil has secret too. You know, people in secret courts. Amen. Secret society. Secret police. Business secrets. God himself has secrets. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. So if you want to operate in that covenant, the first thing is that you have to fear God. And that was what happened to Joseph. Joseph feared God. He did not commit sin with Potiphar's wife. And he will show them his covenant. God is a God of covenant. He made a covenant with Abraham. And he kept that covenant with Isaac. And that covenant came upon Jacob and upon Israel, even unto the Jews up to today. That covenant is still in place. It's an agreement. God is a God you know, of covenant. He operates a covenant. He made a covenant with David. Amen? That the throne would not depart from his lineage. Amen? He made a covenant with Abraham. Hallelujah! He made a covenant with what we call Abrahamic covenant. He made a covenant with Moses. Moses, sorry. When he went and brought, you know, the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. You know, he made a covenant with him. Which we call Mosaic uh, uh, covenant. He made a covenant uh, you, you know, we, with, with Abraham, I told you, Abrahamic covenant, with Moses, you know, even Adam. He made a covenant with Adam. Whatever Adam names the animal becomes what? Becomes what? Their names. Adamic covenant. Amen. He made a covenant, you know, with uh, uh, marriage covenant. The marriage covenant means we are a man and a woman to come together to become husband and wife. So, he's a God of covenants. He lives and operates on that premise. And also, he told us to bring our tithe. So, if you want to possess your possession to experience open heavens, this is God. Even Abraham was a tither. If you want to experience open heavens, you must be a covenant tither. You must be a covenant giver. You must be a covenant tithe. So, if you have two jobs, if you know, some people are paying tithe with one job, I say, God, you can take this what? tight from this job. And then the other job is to keep it for themselves. No. God say, bring what? Or the, the man, the one that wakes you up in the morning, or, you understand, is the one that is telling you to bring all the tithes. We have seven businesses. He wants the tithes for what? All those seven businesses. So many times we we'll try to rob God by robbing ourselves. So, but God is saying, bring you what? All the tithes. Don't try to keep anyone. Remember what happened to Sapphira and, and, and uh, Ananias? Is it? Uh, uh, Sapphira, right? Yeah, in Acts chapter, Acts, Acts chapter 5, we are the light of the Holy Spirit. So God expects you to willfully. You know, I say he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. So God has a storehouse that there might be what? Meat. That's provision in my house. God's house. And prove me now here with say the Lord of hosts. If I will not what? Open the windows of heaven. So when you, when you do your own part, when you bring your tithe and your offering into God's house faithfully and faithfully, God has a mechanism that when you obey, you know, that mechanism will cause those who have obeyed to begin to, the blessing to begin to pour come upon them. They will, they will experience open heavens. He said, they are open to you. Windows of what? Heaven. So, uh, and that means heaven has windows. Amen. I don't think hell has windows. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hell has only one entry and no exit, no window, no door, nothing. Just one, one entry, no exit, no window, no ventilation, no AC is hell all the way. Hallelujah. But heaven is a place of peace, joy, glory is a place of uh, laughter. So it says, and I will pour out a blessing. God wants to pour what? Out what? 
a blessing that there shall be no room to enough to receive. I, I want somebody to believe this scripture so that you can possess what belongs to you. So that the thief will stop stealing from you. So that the devourer, what happens when we don't obey this? If you read further, look at verse 11. When we don't, when we don't obey this covenant, we are God is beckoning on us, believers, Christians, to bring their tithes. Some people go to church, they don't pay tithes. But there's a problem. He said, and I will rebook. This is what God will do. I will what? Rebook what? The devourer for your sake. Who is the devourer? The devil. Amen? I think it's in the book of First Peter. The Bible says, for the thief, he said, the, 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 the enemy is, is moving around looking for what? Whom to what? Devour. The enemy the, the, is what? Like a roaring lion moving around looks, looking for who to what? Devour. He tries to devour your blessing. Devour your children. But your tithes, your covenant obedience, helps God say, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That means you, your pastor cannot even do it. Amen? Your prophet, your prophet cannot do it. God himself, he said, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, who's the devil? He goes as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he might well devour. So the devourer is what God said in that Malachi chapter 3 verse 11, that I will rebuke what? The devourer for your sake. What happened to Job? Okay, when Job lost all his sons and lost his business and lost his children, was the devourer came and devoured his business. Remember, the devourer does not only devour business, it can, it can kill. According to John 10 10, the devourer, the word devourer there, another name for Satan is what? Devourer. Okay, the, the thief cometh not but to what? To steal, to kill, and to what? Destroy. So, that's what he does. So people think, oh, he's going to come and steal my business. No, he can kill you. <laughs> he's going to kill you. <laughs> if he cannot steal your business, and that will happen to Job. He killed all his children. He, he, destroyed all his, he, he destroyed all his business. If he cannot steal, he will kill. If he cannot kill, he will, he will destroy. So God said, when you obey me and, and bring your tithe, I will open heavens for you to possess what belongs to you. It belongs to you, but that is conditionally. It's condition-based based on your obedience. Amen? Alright, let's go to uh, the next one. You know, also you can uh, possess your possession by binding the strong man. It's a prayer, but it's a different kind of prayer. Amen? You need a level, a level of grace to be able to bind the strong man. Now, look at the book of Mark chapter 3 verse 27. Mark chapter 3 verse number 27. If somebody's blessed, shout hallelujah. No man, somebody say no man. No man can enter into a strong man's house. When you hear Bible call something strong man, it's really strong. Go. Amen. Yeah. No man. That the, Jesus was saying, say no man can enter into a strong man's house. Just like maybe Goliath is still alive today and he, he took something from you. Yeah. You called your father to go and go to Goliath's house and you look at it and almost a 10 feet monster. And you are like a chicken behind him. How can you even think of when you hear <laughs> when your son tells you ah that it was a Goliath? You better say okay, yeah, leave him, leave him with him. Ah. Do, do, do you know? <laughs> you know, you want him to you want him to swallow me? You're, you're almost like a fly in his mouth. Amen. And that was how he looked down on uh, David, not knowing that David had a divine backup. Amen. It was a divine. It was a divine backup. Say no man can enter into a strong man's house and what? Spoil is good. You can't go there and say, okay, I, I tie you down and go I, I and go and collect what belongs to you. Except he will first what? Bind the strong man. That means tie him down where he can no longer come out. Then you can quickly run and go and collect what belongs to you. That's what he's saying. So you need a stronger man to help you. Who is that stronger man? Jesus. When you have that stronger man, he will help you to bind. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will be speaking, but he's the one speaking through you. You can now, you know, issue that command. You, the strong man of my father's house, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Pa! Parabo shakalaba. Zababo sete kabo sante. Kebabo. Yeah, the Holy Ghost now begins to speak through you. Then you can see the strong man being bound. Then, that's how you realize, all of, all of a sudden, you got that job. All of a sudden, you got your green card. All of a sudden, you get that interview. Now, because the strong man has been bound, amen, in the place of prayer, then you can go and what? Possess your 
position. Ancestors have made a covenant with that you need to invoke in the place of prayer. Many times you have to add fasting to it in order to bind the strong man. Jesus said, this one cannot go except by what? Praying and fasting. So you now issue that command and you better have some power to issue that command because if you can, if you bind the strong man and you look at you and say, hmm, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? And guess what? What's, what happened to the sons of Sceva? It might happen to you. The demon, the, <laughs> the demon now, you know, caught up with him, flogged him, tore his clothes, you know, he ran away naked. <laughs> because he was trying to adjure you by, by, by rise up and walk. What happened? The man received strength on his ankles and he began to walk. Why? He had the relationship with Christ. He has been, he's anointed. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you want to bind a power, you better be higher than that power. If that power realizes that you don't have power, you don't have um, you don't have Jesus' power, you don't have the Holy Ghost power, you don't have relationship with Christ, guess what's gonna happen? It will backfire. There'll be a counter-attack. So for you to collect what belongs, there are some things that God has given to you, that given to your family, blessings, but it's been this strong man sat down on it. I pray in the name of Jesus. That the, by the power of the Holy Ghost, whatsoever strong man that has sat upon your business, sat upon your, 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 your career, sat upon your green card, sat upon your open heavens, today we bind them in the name of Jesus. Be bound in the name of Jesus. Be bound in the name of Jesus. Sakalabo shate, kelebo sete kabo, rakete zete, zo zandabo, pake karaba, zo kake pote, zo zanda kelebo. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And that was what Peter said. Then Peter said, save her not, or, and gold. I don't have money. Okay? I know you're paralyzed. I have none of those things you are looking for. You're a beggar, you're a beggar right? But there's something I have. I have Jesus. I know Jesus. He lives in me. He has anointed me. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But as such as I have, I will give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. So it was a strong man, a power that paralyzed him, that turned him to beggar. Amen. So guess what? He possessed his legs again. He was able to walk. He received strength and began to walk around. I pray, whatsoever that has paralyzed you, today by the power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk whenever the enemy has kept you. In the name of Jesus, possess your legs, possess your hands, possess your freedom. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. So in summary, we can see that you, know, uh, you can possess your position in the place of prayer by humility. You can possess your position you know, by revelation of the word. You can possess your position by you know, aggressive prayer. Prayer taking it by force. Amen. You can also possess your position by divine hand of God and favor of God upon your life. You can also possess your possession by divine instruction, divine instruction, a prophetic instruction, like what God, like what Elisha told, you know, Naaman, go and immerse yourself in River Jordan seven times. He began to argue. Is Abana in Syria? Is it not better than uh, 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 Jordan? Jordan is a very dirty water. No, sir. You are go and just obey the instruction. The maid had to beckon on him. As soon as he obeyed that instruction, he possessed his health. He became like a brand new baby because of divine instruction. And the mother of Jesus Christ said, Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And guess what? He she told them ahead of time. Don't argue with him. That was the first miracle. I'm, I have the, I'm the mother. I know his arts. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not ordinary. And as soon as he told them to feed the water, I mean, crazy idea. When it's finished, you are filling water. Who can? Who's, who will obey that? Amen. If I were there, probably I would think something is wrong. But guess what? You know, a, a mad idea, but it's miraculous. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, pro, in the prophetic, you can give instruction when Jesus Christ, you know, put his hand, hand on the sand, spit on the sand, and put on his eyes. What is this man doing? But you know, if you understand the prophetic, you know that they, sometimes they can take make crazy things. Who will take sand? He's already blind. 
We know that people that get blind, they get blind because of river blindness, sandstorm, and now you're adding more sand to his eyes. Amen. In fact, he even spat on it <laughs> and put on his eyes. But he, you know, we came from the clay. So he was recreating his eyes. Hallelujah. That is my own interpretation. So I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will help you to possess. There's something you are believing God for in this first day. Remember, the month of the, the ninth month is a month of delivery. There's something you are pregnant of that you are going to be, there's going to be a delivery of your blessing. Like when an Amazon delivers your package. I pray in the name of Jesus that which heaven has promised you, that which belongs to you, you shall repossess what the thief has stolen from you. In the name of Jesus, there is something God has given you. Ah, God told, an angel told Daniel, from the first day you prayed, we have already had your blessing, but a power held us hostage. A prince of Pasha. He continued to pray. He continued to pray. I, I, I encourage you, don't give up in the place of prayer. Don't quit and throw away the curtain, the, throw in the towel. Continue in the place of prayer. Like I told you, if you are tired of prayer, turn into singing. That was what Paul and Silas did. They said, I pray, meet Invoking your blessing. Make a vow. Make a, make a vow like Hannah. Amen. So that you can possess, you know, go into a fast. You know, try different things. And if you have given, if you have the word of a, a Holy Spirit gives you a word, obey the word. If a prophet gives you a word, you know, a true prophet gives you a divine instruction, obey that word. You might say, go into three days of waiting upon the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray and I, I join faith with you that that which belongs to you shall come up, shall, you shall possess your possession in the name of Jesus. Possess your marriage, possess your children, possess your blessing, possess your health in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout a belief in hallelujah. A better hallelujah. The Lord is good. Beloved, if you have been listening to this message and there's something that belongs to you and you have tried and you could not and you are not saved, you are not safe. If you are not saved, you are not safe. I would like you to come to get to know Jesus so that you can have the peace of mind, the peace of life. You, your life will be secured in eternity. I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner that needs your help. I repent of every known sin. I forsake them today. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Write my name in the book of life. I believe you are the son of God and God raised you from the dead. Friends, family, if you have said that, you are a child of God, you are born again. And I pray and ask God to give you the grace to remain steadfast, the grace to run a righteous race, the grace to run a victorious race, the grace to possess your position in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Finally, I want you to take this one prayer point. This prayer point, very powerful. So you're going to declare, say, Father, upon this Zion, upon this Zion, I command my deliverance. I command my blessing. I command my, my stolen blessing. I command my possession to locate me in the name of Jesus. Upon this Zion, upon this mountain, Lord, I pray and ask, oh Lord, I command my deliverance and I command my blessing to comfort. I possess my blessing. Possess your green card. Possess your children. Possess your husband. Possess your wife. Possess your health. Possess your possession. Upon my Zion, there shall be holy deliverance and there shall be holiness and the children of God, the house of Jacob, shall possess their possession. Possess what belongs to you. That which the thief has stolen, repossess it now. Recover it now. Possess your job. Possess your business. Possess your health. Possess your belonging. Possess 
power. Possess your son, possess your daughter, possess your husband, possess your job, possess your peace, possess your life. Recozata, possess your document. What the thief has stolen, recover it now, repossess it now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Take it by force. Take your business by force. Take your job by force. Take your blessing by force. Barabo shate kalabo zabolebo sete kakaka. Pack blessing. I command divine favor. I command favor. I command increase in the name of Jesus. You are believing God for increase. The Bible says the Lord shall increase your greatness and He shall comfort you on every side. Jebelebo sate kakoba. The Bible says I look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Oh God, they have made heaven and earth. I command their release of their blessing, the release of their healing, the release of their favor. In the name of Jesus, Malabo Shatakaba, Kekereka, the Bible says, call upon me, I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things that are the waste none. Malabo Seteka, may God give you a divine release. May God reveal to you the beneficial, the beneficial portion that belongs to you. Release a business idea. Give you a visitation, an encounter. Lekare Shadan, a Jacob encounter, Ebolebo Sete Kakebole, Le Cabo Shanta Cabo, Pacalabo, and the God that answers Jabez. May that same God answer and bless you and enlarge your cause in the name of Jesus. May God supply his riches in glory, he supply riches upon your life. May God cause you to locate your helpers. I call for your helpers from Zion to locate you. I speak to the system institutions. I command whatever that has been belongs to you as the entire down in the heavenlies be released in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. A better and a believing amen. Somebody who is expecting to possess his position shout hallelujah. Shout a believing testimony hallelujah. Shout a better hallelujah. I declare in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the God of Jacob will bless you from Zion in the next 24, 48, 72 hours, there will be a release, there will be a recovery, there will be a replication, the God of Zion will open doors for you in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they have shut doors against you, I command those doors to be open right now. I command heaven to open over your head and I command the gates of heaven to open over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. A better and believing amen. Hallelujah. Again, I want to encourage you and you know, uh, tell you that uh, we're having a prayer meeting, 12 midnight prayer meeting on uh, Friday. Midnight prayer is going to be about two hours of extensive power pack prayer. Join us. It's going to be a deliverance prayer. I will encourage you to seriously join us. And um, again, this is your month of deliverance. Whatever that belongs to you is coming your way. Whatever that belongs to you that the enemy has stolen, tied down, is coming your way in the name of Jesus. And God will restore your wasted years. In Jesus' name we pray. And again, I also want to announce on Sunday is a deliverance service for children, children, youths, and uh, young adults. It's called Back to School Deliverance for Children, uh, for youths, and also young adults. It's going to be very interesting. I also invite you to join us via Facebook Live or be in person at Alexandria, Virginia. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please help us to like. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, openheavenstm.com. Openheavenstm.com. And uh, subscribe, like, and share. Amen. And also activate the notification button so that whenever we go on live, you also get us on live. Amen. The good Lord, OHTM. Dot com amen o h t m open heavens open heavens transmission ministry dot com amen the lord bless you and keep you and the lord cause his face to shine upon you it is well with you and your family in jesus mighty name we pray amen god bless you bye now <laughs>